Thursday evening, and the drivers and navigators receive their final instructions. Right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 1984 Zimbabwe Challenge. I'd like to welcome you, the drivers, without whom, again, there would be no rally. Now, the small section, which is literally just around the corner, uh, there's some undercover parking and then there's the wall, that will, we are going to attempt to use as the park firma itself. There are gates at the end of it so that you can, uh, the cars will be locked up there. We think we can get the number of cars that we anticipate back at the end of leg one in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's ten minutes before the start and there's two days of hard driving ahead. How do the drivers feel? Barry van here. Very, very nervous. We want to finish, but we want to finish high up, so we'll just see how it stands at Inyanga. See where we're sitting and we'll just play it from there. Bob Bentley. Well, we've just got to keep going and see how we shape against that PJ, you know. I believe it'll be very competitive. Uh, I don't think he will be that much faster than us. It might be a little bit. Robbie Rushforth. Definitely going to finish this time. Alan Gourlay. Looks as though the Peugeot from Kenya could be pretty good. Um, then the normals, the Barbie crowd, Bob Bentley, Don McDonald, Ronnie Watt. He's going to have to go right from the word go. Doug Smallman. Uh, reasonably confident. Um, this is a very tactical rally and uh, one has to be very careful about speed. Don McDonald. That's fine. We hope, just hope it keeps going. We're pretty determined this year to get to the end, not like last year. Eight o'clock and the Kenyans are first off, followed by the remaining 31 cars at two-minute intervals. Bob Bentley and John Rowe. Don and Jackie McDonald, winners in 1967 and 1973. Ronnie Watt and 1971 winner Dick Hickson-Smith. Barry Van Heerden and former safari navigator John Mitchell. After Penalonga, the third control point of leg one, the Kenyans and Bob Bentley are already locked in battle, three minutes ahead of Ronnie Watts' escort. Ivan Heerden has dropped four minutes behind the leaders with brake problems and brings the Datsun 160 into the service point for a quick check. As the cars approach Troutbeck Inn and the eighth control point, Bob Bentley and John Rowe in a yellow escort are making up time fast on the Kenyan Peugeot. At check-in, the Zimbabweans have powered their way into first place and a lead of two minutes on Horsey and Williamson. Things are going well for Robbie Rushforth. He and navigator Chris Dickinson holding on to third place, three minutes ahead of Watt and Hickson Smith, but 13 minutes behind the Kenyan crew. Satwant Singh, still the leading Zambian, and he's moved up to share fifth place with the hard-charging Angus Ogilvy. Don McDonald is finding the standard suspension on his Datsun a bit of a handful over the rough sections, and he's dropped two places to lie seventh. Barry van Heerden and John Mitchell are still dogged with brake trouble, and have lost another five places to lie tenth at Troutbeck. The only African driver left in the event, Matthew Bassa, holds on to his lead in the 1300cc class, but is being pushed hard by the little Mazda pickup of Colin Barnett and Mark Draga. These two are 14th overall in what is essentially a standard motor car. 
Surprise at the stage are Alistair Graham-Smith and Graham Naylor in the Mazda RX-2, who are tied for 7th with the McDonald's at Troutbeck after starting 33rd. At Troutbeck Inn, the teams have a short rest, and service crews have the chance to carry out essential repairs before battle is rejoined on the return trip to Mutari. At Selborne, the first control point after Troutbeck, David Horsey in the Peugeot has pulled back two minutes on Bentley. And with two time controls left before Mutari, the battle is hotting up. Colin Barnett has his own method of arriving at control points. He's pushing a little Mazda hard, but loses another two minutes to the deceptively quick Matthew Barsa. Alan Hooper and Carol Trower in the Mr. Thirsty Alpha are another crew in a hurry, pulling back a minute on Kambitsis and Tarnsend in the potent Datsun BDA. Graham Mitchley and Carlos Dos Santos continue their struggle for 19th place, both passing Elaine Mays in the Hertz Renault. The Mishanalan Parts Automotive Developments crew work feverishly on the Datsun of Smallman and Silk. They've lost a lot of time since Penalonga. Duck Smallman. I clipped a rock coming around the corner and uh, bent the tie rod in. And I, I had to drive 170 kilometers with the wheel alignment out, the wheels towing out. Um, which was quite hairy, but we, we replaced it at the back and the car's going very well now. Robbie Rushworth has dropped down to sixth place, but is still running strongly. We came over a hump about 100 mile an hour. As I landed, the wheel tucked in under the body, there's the mark. Tell you what, I thought, well, this is it. Full time off. I thought, yeah, guys, <laughs> over again. Stop, had a look. Ten minutes we managed to change it, but that put us back a long way. Bob Bentley has pulled out all the stops and still leads by two minutes from the Kenyans, completely unruffled by the day's hard driving. We're both running on the same minute, the Fusion and ourselves. We took two minutes off him going into track back, and he uh, got it back on the last section. Uh, we in fact running on the same minutes at the moment. Checking in at Mutari at the end of leg one is Bentley and Rowe, escort first. Horsey and Williamson, Peugeot, second, two minutes down. Ron Watt and Dick Hickson Smith, escort, third, 20 minutes down. Angus Ogilvy and Duke de Cordray, Cortina, fourth, 24 minutes down after a brilliant drive on perhaps the most difficult stage. The second leg starts from Mutari at midnight on Friday and winds its way through the rugged Chimani Mani Mountains. At 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, the Kenyan crew have muscled their way back into contention and are level pegging with Bentley and Rowe, despite a slipping clutch. The escort has had tyre problems and Bob's having to fight hard to hold on to the rapid Peugeot 504. The first two cars have pulled out an incredible 24 minutes over the third-placed crew of Watt and Hicks and Smith. The amazing Angus Ogilvy, in only his first full season of rallying, has fourth place nailed down 12 minutes behind Watt and six minutes ahead of the flying Sikh Satwant Singh. The veteran Zambian ace has been nursing a sick gearbox since the very beginning of the leg. After their first leg problems, Barry Van Heerden and John Mitchell are well wound up, passing Don McDonald and closing to within six minutes of the ailing Singh. Alan Hooper's distinctive sideways style in the Mr. Thirsty Alpha moves him up to 12th place, six minutes behind Barnett. Sadly, Robbie Rushford's fine run is over with terminal clutch trouble, the fourth challenge in a row he's been sidelined. Carlos Dos Santos is being pushed hard on the road by Graham Mitchell's pleasure, but overall he's still five minutes in front. Angus Ogilvy in the Cortina has been the revelation of the rally so far. Which section has been the most difficult? For us, it was the morning rally. Because it didn't suit our past. We're just running 
local fire station. Barry van Heerden is another driver to have picked up well after early trouble. Yesterday there was brake problems. We'd done modifications to the back end and put disc brakes on. Um, and we're having problems with them, so we threw them off and chucked the old drum brakes back on and it's working well. Sat one Singh is ahead of Barry on time and very nearly caught him on the road too. I caught him up, but then uh, we spun. Too much dust. We had to change the alternator. We had a problem with the gearbox. So we are just waiting for finishing. Matthew Barsa and Ted C are still leading the 1300cc class. Oh, well, this stage is, this year we're really uh, tough. Because wherever we were going, there were corners and the distance to uh, control the car. But I managed to do that. Colin Barnett has been working wonders with the standard Mazda pickup but has been unable to close on Barca. I tried to take some time off Matthew. The sod took pretty two minutes off of us then. <laughs> Horsey and Williamson have now pulled out two minutes on Bentley and Rowe, but can they hold on to the finish? We don't want to push this car because it's dying rapidly. We want to take it very easy. The clutches are slipping and we've tried everything. I mean, it doesn't seem to be able to cure it. And if we can back off, it'll be okay. At Rusapi, the third stage of the final leg, it's the Kenyans Peugeot which arrives first. They're still going quickly, but horses visibly hampered by the inoperative clutch, which they've now managed to lock solid. Bentley and Rowe are second car through, but they've lost another two minutes to the Kenyans. Bob's trying as hard as ever, but without the right tyres, there doesn't seem to be much he can do to catch the fleeing Peugeot. Ron Watt and Dick Hickson-Smith in the Smart Escort are secure in third place, 12 minutes ahead of the Ogilvy Cortina, despite this bit of over-exuberance. Zambian star Satwan Singh has managed to keep his Fiat's gearbox together and hold on to fifth place. But there's still another 200 kilometers to go, and he's under pressure from Van Heerden. Barry's flying and has already picked up a minute on Satwan since Mutari. A beautifully executed handbrake turn makes him easily the quickest driver through this corner. Don McDonald too is very fast, working very hard at the wheel. Bromley Control, the last competitive stage of the Challenge Rally, and it's the blue Kenyan Persia which comes into sight first. They're early and stop outside the control, waiting for their correct entry time. The Peugeot's clutch is locked solid and navigator Dave Williamson has to push while Dave Horsey churns the starter. <laughs> they check in and there's little doubt that the two Kenyans have triumphed in the 1984 Zimbabwe Challenge Rally after a brilliant drive. Bob Bentley and John Rowe are next to arrive, sliding easily through the last corner, but they too are early. No chance to make up time on the Kenyan duo this stage. Third car into the control is the escort of Ron Watt and Dick Hicks and Smith who come in spot on time after a faultless drive. 5.30 Saturday evening and the tired crews arrive at the Monomataipa Hotel in Harare for the official finish. First place after a difficult drive in the clutchless Peugeot pickup, Dave Horsey and Dave Williamson of Kenya. A fighting second after chasing the Blue Peugeot hard for 1,375 kilometers, Zimbabwe's Bob Bentley and John Rowe in the twin cam Ford Escort. A clockwork drive from Zimbabwe's Ronnie Watt and Dick Hickson-Smith brings them a well-deserved third place in the Ford Escort RS. Fourth place after an epic drive, Zimbabwe's Angus Ogilvy and Duke de Cordray. Surely the hardest tries of the rally in their aging Ford Cortina.